and welcome to the Latisms podcast. I'm Evelyn Lamb. In each episode, we invite a Hispanic or Latinx mathematician to share their journey in mathematics. Today, I'm very happy to welcome Jonathan Montano to the show. Thanks so much for taking the time to talk with me. Thank you, Evelyn. It's a pleasure to be here, and I'm happy to talk to you. So can you start by telling us a little bit about yourself, where you're working, that kind of thing? Uh, so I'm Jonathan Montano. Right now, I'm working as an assistant professor in New Mexico State University. Uh, before being here, I was in University of Kansas working as a postdoc. And before that, I was a grad student at Purdue University. And I'm very excited on a personal level to have someone else in the mountain time zone, because that means that I haven't had to uh, <laughs> do the back and forth, making sure each the time zone is correct for recording. Yeah, it is convenient. <laughs> So um, how did you end up in mathematics? Uh, did you, as a child, did you know that you wanted to be a mathematician? Well, I remember uh, when I was in uh, elementary school, the teachers used to, used to say that I, uh, that I was doing well in mathematics. So those are the, uh, my earliest uh, memories about that. But uh, I guess everything started when I started going to math Olympiads in Colombia. Uh, I think I'm lo- I was lucky to, to be able to participate in these competitions uh, because very early on, I, I found out that I had a certain passion uh, for solving math problems. I remember spending long hours trying to solve one single problem and, and you know, like the reward of uh, finally getting the solution was, uh, was something that I really, I really liked and I really appreciated. So I think that's, that's like my earliest uh, memories that I have in mathematics. It seems like the Columbia Math Olympiad has really produced a lot of mathematicians. I think you're the third one uh, that I've talked to who has come up through that program. Yeah, we had a very good math uh, math program, math Olympics program. And one of the great things they did is that uh, they used to bring former participants that were already um, studying mathematics in universities in, in Europe and the U.S., and they used to, uh, or they do still, bring those students back and teach to the younger students. And I think uh, seeing that example uh, from former participants really motivates you and, and shows you that, you know, it's possible to, to, uh, to have a career there. And I, uh, I think that uh, that influence of seeing the former participants really uh, caused these uh, new students to, to follow that path. And I mean, I, as you see, the result is that many of us uh, are still around and doing research in, in universities here. Right, and it kind of gave you a built-in mentor and role model um, set of people that you could look up to. Definitely, yeah. Um, it, was, it, was, uh, it was great to, to be able to ask uh, people that were already doing that, studying mathematics in, in the U.S. or Europe, uh, ask them uh, what were the steps they followed and uh, what to expect once we, we came here. And I, I have to say that uh, by talking to, uh, to these former participants, I, I, I definitely uh, decided to, to come here and pursue the career in mathematics. And, and I, so far, it's been, it's been great. And as you said, uh, it was like a, a free source of mentors uh, from early on. How has mentorship affected your career, and did you feel like you had a lot of support once you came to the U.S.? Yes, I, I think that uh, mathematics, uh, as, this, as everything in life, is better done when you have a community around you, a support system. And uh, I've, been, I've been lucky to have people around me that have always been willing to, to support me and to guide me in, in every stage of my career. Uh, we were already talking about uh, early on in when I was at school, uh, people from Olympiads, uh, and also as a PhD student, I, I was lucky to have a great uh, advisor that not only was a strong mathematician, but also uh, was always always willing to to talk to to me or, or to other students and uh, on how to you know how to proceed at every stage. And I mean, even even now, I'm still I'm already a professor here at New Mexico State, but I still have people that I consider mentors that I talk to. For example, um, uh, Claudia Polini in Notre Dame, and uh, and my postdoc sponsor Hey Dow. Uh, those are people that I I talk to when I uh, 
uh, when I feel like I have a challenging uh, question and and I I need some uh, you know some some suggestions or some uh, or some ideas from more experienced people. So I I always try to to have this support system and and to ask questions to people who who can uh, give me a, a good a good advice. And you're kind of at that stage in your career where you're moving from being more of a mentee to more of a mentor. You're uh, at that transitional point there. So how how are you now approaching this uh, as a mentor that people are looking up to? Um, yeah, so uh, I, I don't have a graduate student yet, but I'm looking forward to, uh, to that. But I, I've always, as I have always wanted to have mentors around, I've always tried to be a mentor myself. And then I, I remember from, even from, from when I was in high school, I used to, uh, to, to talk to my, my younger students and, and to tell them what to expect if they started participating in, in, in math Olympias, for example. Uh, when I went to, uh, to the undergrad and the, and grad school, I always try to talk to my younger, uh, friends or, for example, the younger students of my advisors, um, you know, to, to serve as a mentor for them and, and to offer my, my ideas of, uh, based on my experience. And, and now, well, I'm looking forward to actually becoming, uh, an official mentor of, of students. And, uh, that's something that I'm really excited about and I'm looking forward to, to having, uh, to having students. And what is your mathematical research area? I work on commutative algebra, which is, um, which is the study of uh, a commutative rings. But I, I often combine methods from combinatorics and geometry in my research. Can you give us an example of one of the questions you might be looking at? Uh, yes. So I, most of my research has been uh, on the same theme, which is uh, looking at asymptotic uh, properties of filtrations of ideals. So, for example, as I'm in my PhD, I, I was working on uh, generalized multiplicities. And I say generalized because uh, those are multiplicities that generalize the classical notion of Hilbert Summing multiplicities. And these are just numbers that are captured by looking at asymptotic properties of, of powers of an ideal. And it has applications to intersection theory in algebraic geometry, to internet closures in algebra. And... Um, and then uh, looking at this, looking at these multiplicities, uh, I was able to to find uh, uh, conditions for certain graded algebras to have uh, ar good arithmetic properties, like being Cohen Macaulay. And right now, more recently, I've been working on um, on looking at this same asymptotic behavior, but of uh, local cohomology of powers, and also working on symbolic powers of ideas. Uh, looking at how their asymptotic properties are, like the number of generators or the regularity. And do you have um, maybe a favorite math tidbit that you like to share with students that you're uh, talking to or people that you see at a party who might not feel like they like math? Well, what I, what I try to do is uh, to explain my, my research area in very easy terms. So I talk about, you know, how you can relate uh, polynomials with, uh, with a, a, a picture, uh, which is looking at the zeros of that polynomial and looking at this translation between pictures and, and the algebraic side, which is the polynomial, is what I try to, to do to explain uh, my research area. But it's, it's something, you know, that... Uh, is, is just explaining the area in rough terms, in general terms, because you cannot get to specifics. So no career is without some ups and downs. Um, how have you overcome challenges that you've had in your career? So as I said before, I always try to, to keep a, a, a support system. And uh, I, I travel a lot to conferences and I talk to people all the time. Uh, especially about my research. I ask questions or I show them what I'm thinking about to see uh, if they have any feedback. But also on the, on the more human, uh, on the more humans um, aspect, I, I try to, to ask my mentors, the people that I consider my mentors, I, I, I tend to ask, uh, ask them for, for advice and for suggestions on how to proceed. 
uh, of course, I, I like to talk to several people and then and then come up with a solution myself. But I but I would say that my the strategy that I do, it's the strategy that I follow is 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 talking to people that I that I believe have uh, more experience than me and and uh, and then for sure have a good advice to to give me. Do you have advice for students who are considering going into math? Well, what I remember when I was a student in in school. Um, especially coming from, from a country like Colombia where uh, a career in science is not, is not really uh, well seen because most people go into engineering or, or to be a lawyer or to be medical doctors. Uh, so it's, I remember it was, it's, it was very easy for, for everybody to think that, that a career in science or mathematics was not possible or were not, it was not uh, uh, well rewarded. Uh, so I guess the, the 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 thing that I would like to say to to younger students is that this is a great career, and, and that if you really love the science they are following, uh, mathematics for example, that they should go for it because uh, this is a, a career that is uh, is is possible, is fun, is rewarded, uh, and that they should just follow follow that uh, that passion. And this is a, another one that wasn't on the list that I had already talked about. But and so, yes. if you don't want to answer it or don't have an answer, uh, I might think about thought, it. Okay, feel I might, free. Yeah. But um, <laughs> yeah. how did you decide to stay in the U.S. or are you considering going back to Colombia? So that's a uh, that's an interesting question. Um, I think that uh, the U.S. has a lot of um, mathematical activity and that's really something that I like the fact that I can I can take a plane and go to to many conferences and talk to people that are around that's something that is really attractive to me in a professional level uh, Colombia right now is growing uh, a lot in, in science and there are several universities that have very very strong mathematicians in, and scientists so I, I definitely don't discard going back. But for now, I, I really like my life here and I really enjoy my professional, um, my, my job and my, my professional environment here. Is there a, a research accomplishment or other professional accomplishment you've had that you're most proud of? Well, I think that, um, I mean, I already said that this is a career that is, uh, is rewarding and, and that is possible. But I, I also have to be uh, honest and say that it's not easy. And every step that you move up is is like a, a completely different uh, um, accomplishment. So moving from from my PhD to to getting my postdoc at University of Kansas was I consider it to be a a great achievement. And and now getting my my job as assistant professor here in New Mexico State University. Uh, it's also another achievement, and um, and I think I'm I'm very lucky that I I was able to 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 get these positions, and and I would say those are the my professional achievements that I am the proud proud the proudest. Is there anything else you'd like to talk about about your career or anything like that? Okay, so I would like to say that if you are a young student and you're listening to this and and you are interested in algebra, I invite you to to look at the the research that uh, community of algebra rights are doing, especially if you like any of the things that I'm working on and you would like to talk and maybe uh, maybe working working with me, then I, I would like to hear from you. And um, Or even if you don't want to work with me, but just if you want to hear some advice or, um, or some suggestions, feel free to contact me. Okay. Thanks a lot for joining me. Thank you, Evelyn. It was a pleasure to be here and I enjoyed the conversation and the, and the questions that you asked. Thank you for listening to the Latisms podcast. It's produced by me, Evelyn Lamb, and made possible by a Tensor Summa grant from the Mathematical Association of America. Our music is Volvore by La Floresta. Latisms is an initiative to celebrate the accomplishments of Hispanic and Latinx mathematicians. It was founded in 2016 by Alexander Diaz Lopez, Pamela Harris, Alicia Prieto Langarica, and Gabriel Sosa. You can find more information about the project at latisms.org. That's L A T H I S M S dot O R G. 
Join us next time to hear from another inspiring mathematician.